we went ahead and drew a picture of this circular track. We have the sprinter running around the circular track, and we have a friend standing 200 meters from the center. The radius is 100 meters, and then there's this angle formed in the center of the circular track. We have called that theta. Now, using these variables a, b, and c, hopefully we realize that an equation we can use to relate them is the law of cosines. So most of us have learned that the law of cosines is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of that angle theta. Now, it turns out that a and b are constants, but let's understand that. A is the radius of the circle, so no matter where the runner is around the circular track, that radius is going to remain a constant. So we're going to plug in a constant of 100 for A. And then similarly, B is also a constant because B represents the distance that the friend is standing from the center. And so she's always standing a distance of 200 meters from the center, no matter where the runner is along the track. So B is going to be a constant as well. Now, we'll plug in those values. Notice that C is not a constant because that will depend on where the runner is. For example, where we have the runner right now, we can see that C would be a relatively long measurement. But now if the runner moves closer, so say the runner reaches right here, then the distance between the runner and the friend has shortened. So C would now be a smaller value and the angle would also shrink as well. So C varies and the angle varies and that's why we've left them as those variables. Now we're gonna kind of swing down here and simplify this equation. We have C squared equals, now pick up your calculator and do 100 squared plus 200 squared, and you'll get 50,000. And then we have minus and then just multiply to 100 and 200 and you'll get 40,000. And then again, times the cosine of theta. Now, once you have your simplified equation, we have to differentiate this with respect to time. We're doing it with respect to time because this is a related rates problem. These distances are changing as a function of time. And so it makes sense to differentiate them with respect to time. So we begin with the C squared. It's kind of a power rule. You're going to multiply the power of two by the coefficient of one. You'll get two times C, and then you'll subtract one from the power. But don't forget that you have to multiply by the derivative of your variable C with respect to time. And so there we have the derivative with respect to time of c squared. On the other side, we have the derivative of 50,000, which is a constant. We know the derivative of any constant is zero. And then minus 40,000, we have to multiply by the derivative of cos theta, which is negative sine of theta. But then again, we have to multiply by the derivative of our variable theta with respect to time. So d theta dt. Now we're going to simplify this a little bit. We can see that this zero is inconsequential, and then we have a negative times a negative, which will be positive. Now, let's think about some of the values we have to plug in. We can go and start with C. Now, remember, C represents the distance between the sprinter and the friend, so it's this distance right here, and that distance is given because the question says, well, how fast is the distance changing when the distance between them is 200? So this means that at the moment of calculation, we're going to actually be plugging in 200 for C, so that's no problem. And then for this dc dt, well, that's what we're looking for. Again, the question wants how fast is the distance between them changing? So the question is actually asking you to solve for dc dt. That's our unknown. So we know c, we're looking for dc dt, but where we run into some trouble is with theta as well as with d theta dt. We need to find those. So let's talk about how we can find theta first. We go back to our law of cosines equation, this one right here. And we scoot down here and we know that at the moment of calculation that the distance between them is 200. So what this means is for C, you're going to plug in 200. And this is going to help you calculate the angle the moment that the sprinter and the friend are 200 meters away. Now on the left side, we do 200 squared, we get 40,000. We've already done 100 squared plus 200 squared, that was 50,000. And then over here we had the minus 40,000 cosine of theta. We're going to use these data to calculate the theta. In fact, we'll be able to just calculate the sine of theta, as you'll see. So we'll subtract 50,000 from both sides. And on the left side, therefore, we'll get negative 10,000. On the right side, we can cancel this out. And then we're going to divide both sides by negative 40,000. And when we simplify, we can see that 1 fourth is equal to the cosine of theta. Now, to understand how to get sine, we just do a little bit of quick trig here. We can make a right triangle, mark an angle theta. We know cosine is the adjacent 
over the hypotenuse. So let's go to the side adjacent to theta, label that one. We know the hypotenuse is four. We're gonna to need to get the opposite side. For now, we'll just call this B. So we know from Pythagorean theorem that one squared plus B squared is equal to four squared. We have one plus B squared is equal to 16. Subtract one from both sides. B squared is 15. And therefore, when you square root both sides of that, you will see that the B is the square root of 15. So now go back and look at that triangle and you can easily figure out what the sine of theta is because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite from theta is the square root of 15 and the hypotenuse is four. So there's our sine of theta, it's root 15 over four. We can go back and actually plug that in right here. So this is great because we're really getting close to solving for d theta dt. Now to solve for it, let's consider the picture again. Now, as the sprinter runs along the track, he's covering this sort of curved distance. And you might remember that that curved distance is an arc length. We've learned an arc length formula in a pre-calculus course. We know arc length is equal to radius times theta. Now, in this picture, we have called that arc length d. So we'll just make a little substitution there. And we know the radius is 100. Now, what we can do is actually differentiate this equation with respect to time. And if we do that, we're going to get the derivative of the distance d with respect to time equals, and then on this side, we're going to have 100 and then times the derivative of our variable with respect to time, which is d theta dt. Now, you might wonder, what is this d, d dt variable? Well, that is simply the rate of change in that distance. You can think of the runner moving along the circular track and that distance is changing with respect to time, that's basically the speed. You can think of this quantity as the speed of the runner as he traverses a distance d per unit time. And the speed of the runner was given to us. If we go back up, we know the speed was that seven meters per second. So we're gonna actually plug in seven for that speed. And then this is neat because this is going to allow us to find that d theta dt. You just divide both sides by 100 and that gives you d theta dt. So now we're in business because we go back to our equation that we had been developing earlier, this one right here, and we're gonna take that d theta dt and we're just gonna plug in the seven over 100. And then don't forget that the value of c was that distance between the sprinter and the friend and that was given in the problem as 200. So over here we'll have two times 200. And now it's just a matter of solving. So let's look at the right hand side. It's a bit of a mess, but you can do 40,000 multiplied by seven, and then divide that by 100 times four. And then you should get 700, but don't forget you're still multiplying by that root 15. On the other side, you have two times 200, which is 400. And then finally, just divide both sides by 400 and you will get your dc dt. We'll have 700 root 15 over 400. Let's just reduce that to seven root 15 over four. And then let's ask ourselves, well, what's the unit? Well, C is, is a distance. You can see in the numerator here, we have C and that distance was measured in meters and then time is measured in seconds. So this is meters per second. That is the correct answer to the question. If you need a decimal value, you can punch in seven root 15 over four into a calculator. You'll get an approximate answer of 6.78 meters per second. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small don donation of my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so.